Hello everybody, Jennifer Maker here. It's a beautiful day to make some DIY gift bags. Yes, gift bags. Gift bags are so handy when you're gifting an oddly shaped item or just don't have time to wrap. Sure, you can totally buy gift bags and many of us do, including myself, but a homemade gift bag is the perfect finishing touch to a thoughtful gift. And let's not forget all those times when you need a gift bag at the last minute and you just don't have time to get to the store. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you can just make one yourself using whatever colors and patterns you want. Now I've designed three simple gift bags. A simple gift bag using the Cricut, this one right here, one inspired by designer purses, and even one you can make without a cutting machine over here. And once you know the basics, you can customize them for your every need. You can use different materials to personalize them in so many ways. I'll also show you how to add personal touches like an initial or a name. Let's head on over to my craft table and I'll show you how to get started with your own gift bags. So today I'm sharing three gift bag ideas. Two are made from cardstock and one is made with wrapping paper. It is the perfect way to use the last little bit on your favorite roll of wrapping paper. Now, when you're picking out wrapping paper for your gift bag, some wrapping paper is really fragile. You know, the kind that is so much fun to rip open. You don't want that kind because it's not going to make a great gift bag. Look for the heavier weight wrapping paper options. Also, paper with an all over pattern is a good idea. You don't want there to be any words or images that will be upside down on the other side of your bag. And double sided wrapping paper like this can make a super cute bag too. Now for the wrapping paper gift bag, you'll also want a long ruler, some thick cardstock, and a few of my favorite tools will help you get the best result. Now the wrapping paper gift bag is made by hand with scissors, but I also want to show you how you can use a cutting machine like a Cricut to make awesome gift bags. So for the second and third gift bags, you'll need high quality cardstock. I'm using these 12 by 12 inch solid core cardstock options. These bags are a great opportunity to use all those patterned and textured papers that you've been saving. Keep that long ruler and my favorite tools handy for assembly on those gift bags as well. Now I cut out my cardstock on the Cricut Maker 3 using a green standard grip machine mat. You can also use an original maker or an explorer. And I have a surprise for Cricut Joy owners at the end of this video too. My gift bag designs are free and come in both scored and dashed cut line versions. So you can just use a fine point blade for everything with or without a scoring tool. And I will share tips for both approaches in this tutorial. So first, I'm going to teach you how to make a wrapping paper gift bag by hand, and then I'm going to show you where to get my gift bag design files to make gift bags on your Cricut. So let's get crafting. Step one, select and cut paper to size. Gather your wrapping paper, ruler, pencil, and scissors. Remember, use good quality paper for a strong bag. And if you want to make a bag with a flap like I am, find paper with a nice color on the back too. We'll start by cutting a rectangle of paper. The size depends on how big you want to make your bag, but follow along with me for your first project. My bag is going to be seven and a half inches square and just under four inches deep. I also wanted to have a two inch flap at the top edge. So I need a piece of paper that is 22 and a half inches wide and 12 inches tall. If you don't want the flap, just subtract two inches from the height. If your wrapping paper has guidelines, use a ruler and scissors to cut it to size. Or use your ruler and pencil to draw your shape on the paper's lighter side and then cut it out. Step 2. Fold the bag sides and flap. Place your paper face down with the longer sides running horizontally. Use your ruler to make several marks half an inch from the short right edge. Place the ruler's right edge on the marks to draw a straight line. Then fold the paper over the ruler to make a half inch tap. That's where we'll add glue to join the bag sides in a few steps. If your paper is sturdy enough, run a scraper over the fold. 
With the tab still creased, fold it to meet the left edge. If the edges are uneven, trim the excess off the unfolded side. Then unfold it, creating a central vertical line. Flip your paper over so the side that you want on the bag's exterior faces up. Make sure your tab is to the right, but unfold it for now. Next, let's fold over our top flap. If you don't want a flap, just skip this step. Use your ruler to mark two inches down from the top edge at several points, then connect them with a straight line. Place the ruler's edge on the line and fold the paper down. The bag is now 10 inches tall and two inches of the interior paper shows at the top. Add some glue under the flap's side edges to help it lie flat. Flip the project over so the short tab is to the left. Fold it back in to show the exterior. Place a line of glue along the tab and then fold the other short edge to cover it. Make sure your edges are aligned and the tab on your flap is folded under and glued. Hold the paper in place until the glue sets. Step three, fold and glue the bottom of the bag. Fold the bottom edge up so that it meets the flap's bottom. If you don't have a flap, fold the bottom up about a third of the way. Make sure your sides line up, crease it, then unfold. Push the two sides of that bottom section in towards each other. Flatten them to create two triangles on either side. If you're familiar with origami, this is like a squash fold. The triangles will be the same color as the outside of your bag. Make sure all three corners of each triangle are sharp and then make creases along your folds. Next, fold the top part of this bottom section down so its edge lands a quarter of an inch below the middle line. Fold the bottom section up and overlap the top section's lower edge by half an inch. You'll now see we have two diamond shapes to the left and right of the bottom flaps. Unfold the flaps that we just made and apply glue to the four outer triangles. Make sure you don't get glue on the center portion under the flaps. That is the bag's inside and you don't want to glue the bottom to it. Now fold the top section back down and then add a thin line of glue where the bottom flap will overlap it. Fold up the lower flap and hold it in place until the glue sets. Step four, fold and shape your gift bag. Now we'll fold the left and right sides of the bag inward, which will make it three-dimensional. Pay attention to the angled edge at the bottom of each side flap. Align these edges with the bottom flap's angled sides. Once your angled edges just touch, you should have a nice sharp corner at the bottom sides. My folded side flaps were a bit less than two inches wide. Once your side flaps are positioned correctly, crease your folds really well. Now you're all done folding, it's time to create the final shape of the bag. Put one hand inside your bag from the top and carefully push down on the bottom to open up the bag. You may have to push on it from a few different spots to get the bottom completely flat. Just like a store-bought bag. Go slowly and keep trying until the bottom is flat enough to sit on your work surface. If you're having trouble, try folding the bag's creases in the opposite directions. Now fold the middle crease on both sides inward. Make sure all four edges of your bag are neatly creased and folded outward. Your bottom and sides will be square, and your bag will have the shape of a gift bag that you would have bought from the store. Isn't this cool? Step 5. Cut and attach the handles. You're almost done with your gift bag. The last step is to add your handles. Cut two 16-inch pieces of ribbon. Put a small line of glue at each end of the ribbon and attach them to one inner side of the bag. I place mine about an inch and a half from each edge and an inch from the top. Do the same with your other ribbon on the other side. Hold the ribbon in place until the glue is set. Your bag now has handles. If you want to place anything heavy in your bag, you can reinforce the bottom with a piece of thick cardstock or cardboard. If you made your bag the same size as mine, cut your paper or cardboard to about 7 inches by 3.5 inches. 
With the reinforcement, the bag can hold about four pounds. Now let's go over my cardstock gift bag, which I cut with my Cricut. Step one, get my free DIY gift bag design files. I'm happy to share my gift bag design files for free with you. To get them, go to jennifermaker.com slash 390 and look for libraries in the red bar at the top. Then either click get a password if you don't yet have one or click enter the library. You can find the designs by searching the page for design number 390 and then click it to download a zip file with an SVG for cutting on a Cricut or another cutting machine, a DXF file, and a printable PDF for cutting by hand. If you need to cut these by hand, do so now. If you're using a Cricut cutting machine, let me show you how that works. When you view the SVG folder, you'll see two folders inside of it, one without purse in the title and one with it. I'm gonna show you how to make the version without the purse details, so open that folder. Inside that folder, you'll see one SVG with no score tool needed and another that says score tool or stylus. Let's go over the easier no score tool version. Upload the appropriate SVG to Cricut Design Space and add it to your canvas. If you're unsure how to do this, just go to jennifermaker.com slash SVGS to learn how to unzip and upload files. So here's what my gift bag design looks like in Cricut Design Space. You may want to zoom out in order to see the full design. Click the minus sign in the lower left corner of the canvas. You can use these buttons to zoom in and out on your canvas as needed. Now, this no scoring tool version of the design uses small dashed cut lines instead of score lines. I did it this way so you don't have to use a scoring stylus or tool. The dashed lines will help you fold your cardstock later on. And don't worry, the dashed lines are super small so the cardstock will bend without falling apart. I love this technique. If you prefer to use a scoring tool, however, go ahead and use the score tool version of this design. I explain how to attach score lines to the purse shaped bag in the written tutorial that goes along with this project. Follow those steps to make a simple bag with a score tool. You can find the instructions over at jennifermaker.com slash DIY gift bag. To make changes to the design, click ungroup. Your screen should look similar to mine. I'm using the colors that you see here, but you can change the colors by selecting each layer and clicking on the color picker at the top of the screen. Now this file makes a rectangular gift bag about 7 inches wide by 8 inches tall and just over 4 inches deep. The bag can be made smaller. However, going bigger would require gluing paper together for the front, so I don't recommend it. To adjust the size, click Select All in the top menu. Then click and drag the resize icon on the design's bounding box to the size you want. Then click on one of the yellow pieces in the layers panel and check the width at the top to see the new size. You can also use the canvas grid lines to get an idea of the height. Just look to the left of the top shape. When resizing, remember to keep the lock icon locked to maintain the design's proportions. If you need any help resizing an SVG in Cricut Design Space, check out my resizing guide at jennifermaker.com slash resize SVG. If you'd like to customize your gift bag with an initial, here's how. Click the text icon on the left side of the screen. A box with text highlighted in it will appear on the canvas. Without clicking anything else, type the letter you want. I'll use M for Maker. Then click the box that says Cricut Sans under Font in the top menu to see your font options. Scroll through and click Fonts to see how your letter looks in it until you find the one you like. Make sure your font choice doesn't have a price next to it to avoid a charge when you go to cut the design. I'm going to use the font Brenson Charlotte, which can be purchased from fontbundles.net, but you can use the font that you like best. If you need help filtering and finding the best fonts, check out my font finder cheat sheet at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut fonts list. With your letter selected, resize it to be no more than two and a half inches tall, so it fits nicely on the bag's front. Then change the color to match the circle using the color box in the top menu. 
This way they'll cut from the same mat. And here's a quick note, if you're making the score tool version, be sure to attach your score lines now using the written tutorial. Okay, our bag is ready to go. Make sure you have the right machine selected and click make it. And if you're prompted, click on mat and continue. You should see four mats on the prepare screen. Click continue. Under set base material, select medium cardstock, 80 pound, change your pressure to more and click remember material settings if you're using the same weight of paper for each mat as I am. And make sure your Cricut standard fine point blade is in clamp B and clean. Step two, cut your gift bag design. Place your first mat's cardstock on a green standard grip machine mat. Make sure the pattern or color that you want on the bag's outside is face up. Use a brayer to adhere it well, load the mat and press the flashing button to begin cutting. When the cut is finished, unload the mat, flip it over and roll it back to release the cardstock. Cut the rest of the mats using the colors on the screen for reference. Step three, assemble your cardstock gift bag. Take your two large pieces and lay them face up in front of you with the scallops at the top. On both pieces, fold the scallops down along the top horizontal crease. Use your ruler to get a straight fold and run your scraper over the edge. Now fold the tab on the right side of both pieces under, then flip them over. Apply a thin line of glue along one tab and adhere it to the unfolded edge of the opposite piece. Once the glue dries, apply more along the remaining tab and adhere it to the other side, creating a closed shape. Next, with your bag laying flat and the scallops at the top, find the vertical fold line directly to the left of the right hand side of your bag. Fold outward along this line. Flip your bag over and do the same to the other side. Your bag naturally wants to fold along these lines and will pop up into a 3D rectangle. Flatten your bag again, making sure you have one vertical crease showing on each side. Now fold the bottom up along the horizontal line closest to the top of the bag, crease and unfold. Now for the bottom, here's an important tip. Go slowly and be patient when folding this part. You may need to gently crease the edges of your cardstock along the diagonal lines to encourage it to fold as needed. Push the two sides of the bottom section in toward each other along the diagonal fold lines. Flatten those sides against your work surface to create two triangles on either side. They should match the bags outside. Make sure the triangle's corners are sharp and then crease them with the scraper. Next, fold the top section down along the topmost horizontal fold line. Its open end will overlap the center just a bit. Fold the bottom section up along the bottom horizontal fold line so it overlaps the top section's open end. Unfold the flaps that we just made and apply glue to the four outer triangles. Make sure you don't apply any glue to the center portion underneath the flaps, as that is the inside of your bag. You don't want to glue the bottom to the inside, right? Fold the top section down and then add a thin line of glue where the bottom flap will overlap its edge. Fold up the lower flap and hold it in place until it sets. The next step is to fold the left and right sides of your bag inward along the two vertical fold lines. You should have sharp corners at the bottom left and right of your bag. Once your side flaps are folded correctly, crease your folds really well with your scraper tool. Now you're done folding, it's time to create the final shape of the bag. Just like a store-bought gift bag, you'll want to put one hand inside from the top and carefully push down on the bottom to open up the bag. You may have to push in a few different spots to get the bottom completely flat. Also, it helps to fold the creases in the opposite directions, especially at the bottom. This will encourage it to open outward rather than inward. Go slowly and keep trying until the bag can sit on your work surface. Now fold the middle crease on both sides of your bag inward. Make sure all four edges are neatly creased and folded outward. 
When you're done, the bottom and sides will be nice and square. If the flap isn't lying flat against your bag, glue it down. Step four, attach the details. Gather your remaining pieces. Place the rectangular piece into the bottom of your bag to help reinforce it. With this piece in place, the bag can hold about six and a half pounds. For the tag, gather this circular piece with scalloped edges, the plain circle and the heart. Apply glue to the circle's back and center it on top of your scalloped piece, lining up the two small holes. Now apply glue to the back of the heart and place it in the center of the circle. If you have a monogram, apply glue to the back and center it on the front side. Make sure it doesn't overlap the crease that's about two inches from the bottom so you can still fold the bag flat. Press until it dries. It should look similar to mine. Now let's add the envelope pocket to the inside. It's an A7 size, so it's perfect for a gift card or a folded receipt. Take the last piece with three tabs and fold them under. Apply a thin line of glue to all three tabs and adhere the pocket to the front panels inside. Make sure the open end faces up and the pocket doesn't overlap the small holes at the top of your bag. I position the pocket's top about an inch from the top of my bag. Hold it in place until the glue sets. And you're almost done with your gift bag. The last step is to add handles. Cut two 16 inch pieces of ribbon. Insert one end of the ribbon into one of the front panel's small holes from the front. Tie a double knot inside it so it doesn't slip back out. Now take your gift tag and slide the loose ribbon through the hole from the front. And finally, slide the ribbon through the other small hole on the front of your bag and tie another double knot inside. And then just repeat with your other ribbon on the bag's back. And that's it. You've created a custom cardstock gift bag with a cute tag and a handy pocket for small items. Isn't it adorable? And that's it. You are done. You now have a custom gift bag or several of them that is not only super cute, but also functional. And I really think it was so easy to make, wasn't it? And here's what all three of my finished gift bags look like. I just love how fun they are. Now the purse bag may look complicated, but it's only a few extra steps. And I have the complete tutorial written on my blog at jennifermaker.com slash 390. I hope you will make it. Now remember how I mentioned cutting these gift bags could be done on a Cricut Joy? Here is my example. Isn't it cute? You can resize pretty much anything, including these other gift bags, to fit on your Cricut Joy. You can cut a lot of stuff. It's just a little bit smaller. And you can use your handmade bags to give special items to friends or family members and impress them with your creative skills. They will love that you went the extra mile to customize a bag just for them. Now, if you have any questions about these cute DIY gift bags or the materials or techniques that I went over in this video or anything else craft related that I might be able to help you with, let me know. Just leave your question below this video or ask over at our Cricut Crafters group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters. I love to help and see you succeed. I especially love your photos. And that's it for today. Until next time, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love. Mm -hmm.